Welcome back. All right, so I wanted to do a career video today. I thought, why not? And we'll, we'll pick a Hall of Famer, uh, Glenn Anderson. The number 69 overall pick in 1979. I, I know, I know, I heard it too. Um, so he was a right winger for the Edmonton Oilers. And if you want to get into players who were seen as maybe he's a Hall of Famer, maybe he's not. So there were a lot of Oilers who ended up in the Hall of Fame from that great team in the 80s. Anderson ends up in there after some other guys. There were some public things going on with him after his retirement that may have held him out of the Hall of Fame for a while because that does happen where a player after retirement, something may be going on with them that they go, we'd put you in the Hall, but eh. So 80-81, he debuts for the Oilers, 58 games played, 30 goals, 23 assists, 53 points. Right away, he's a scorer. Being with the Oilers, that works. Uh, this is a team that's built for, for the future. Uh, in the playoffs, nine games played, five goals, seven assists, 12 points. So very successful debut season for Glenn Anderson. He is one of that young, one of the members of that young crop of Oilers that would just transform the game in the 80s. 81-82, he plays the full 80 games, 38 goals, 67 assists, 105 points in the playoffs, five games played. Two goals, five assists, seven points. So Edmonton had a bit of growing uh, pain in 82, which happens. And I remember after 82, a lot of comments about, well, they're not really built for the playoffs. They had the meltdown on, on Manchester, or the miracle on Manchester. Uh, it happened against them, so for them it wasn't a miracle. And so there were a lot of question marks about the Edmonton Oilers after 82, about whether or not they could win in the playoffs. Uh, 83, 72 games played, 48, 48 goals, 56 assists, 104 points. And in the playoffs, they go to the finals that year. They lose to the Islanders. The Islanders win their fourth straight and final Stanley Cup. 16 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. So he is a big part of that Edmonton Oilers team that would, you know, get that close to winning a Stanley Cup, but still kept at bay by the New York Islanders. 83-84, he finally gets his name on the Stanley Cup. 80 games played, 54 goals, the first of two 50-goal seasons he had in his career. 45 assists for 99 points, that close to 100. 19 games in the playoffs, 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. This is also the first time in his career he plays in the All-Star game. So he's an All-Star and he's a Cup winner, right? These are two things they're going to look at when they're deciding Hall of Famers after your career's done. 84-85. Still with the Oilers, of course. 80 games played, 42 goals, 39 assists, 81 points. In the playoffs, 18 games, 10 goals, 16 assists, 26 points. All-Star game and Stanley Cup. So back-to-back -back Cup wins. They're going for a dynasty in 86. Plays 72 games in 86. Was he injured for those eight games? No. Uh, he was suspended eight games for a stick-swinging incident. It was ugly. And that was the thing with Glenn Anderson. There was that edge to his game. He was not shy about using his stick for nefarious means if he felt that it would get him to, to his goal, or if he was just agitated. So he had 54 goals, 48 assists, 102 points in the playoffs, 10 games, 8 goals, 3 assists, 11 points. Of course, they get eliminated uh, by the infamous Steve Smith goal in 86, and that ends the dynasty, at least for that year. 86-87, the dynasty is rekindled. Uh, 80 games played, 35 goals, 38 assists, 73 points. They win the Cup. Uh, 21 games, 14 goals, 13 assists, 27 points for Glenn Anderson. So Glenn Anderson's a big big helper in that Stanley Cup win for the Edmonton Oilers. 87-88, 80 games played, 38 goals, 50 assists, uh, 88 points. Uh, he had the 73 points the year before. 19 games in the playoffs, 9 goals, 16 assists, 25 points in the playoffs. So he gets back above a point a game after being below a point a game in 86-87. All-Star game in 87-88 after not being in the All-Star game during the 86-87 season. But he was also fined in the playoffs for a stick-related incident. Uh, in those 19 games along the way, he does get fined. So suspended eight games, fined here. He was, he was a popular topic of discussion amongst the Edmonton Oilers. He wasn't seen as the cleanest player, however, uh, that, that may have given him more space on the ice because guys may have been worried about what he might do with his stick if he gets angry. 88-89, uh, uh, this is where the offense tails off. 79 games, 16 goals, 48 assists, 64 points. And of course, uh, this is the first year without Wayne. 
Uh, seven games in the playoffs, one goal, two assists, three points. So not only did they not have Wayne Gretzky, now they're out in the first round of the playoffs. But 89-90, Anderson's one of those Oilers that sticks around. Uh, 73 games, 34 goals, 38 assists, 72 points. So the offense bounces back for one year here in the playoffs. 22 games, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. And there's the Stanley Cup. That fifth Stanley Cup is a huge part of the reason that he does get to the Hall of Fame. The fact that he's over a point or at a point a game during those playoffs in that fifth run, also, uh, because you know whether he had been seen as as being a player who had his numbers, you know, amped up by who he was playing with in 1990. That wasn't wasn't the same Oilers team at all, and so him being able to put up those kinds of points with a team that wasn't as talented as the other Cup winners said a lot about his individual talent. 90-91. 74 games, 24 goals, 31 assists, 55 points. His worst offensive output per game, points per game-wise anyways, in his career. In the playoffs, 18 games, 6 goals, 7 assists, 13 points. And in September of 1991, he's traded. He is traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs with Craig Berube and Grant Fuhrer for Vincent Domfus, Peter Ng, Luke Richardson, who's currently coaching the Montreal Canadiens going to the Stanley Cup Final, and Scott Thornton. So it is a huge deal. Absolutely huge deal between two Canadian teams. So Anderson's going from Edmonton, where he's under a lot of, you know, inspection with a microscope, to Toronto, where that increases by a lot. His first year in Toronto, his numbers are similar. 72 games, 24 goals, 33 assists, 57 points. Also noteworthy, he was given a four-game suspension for a slashing incident. So now he's up to 12 games he's missed due to suspension, plus the fine in the playoffs. Again, um, getting into the Hall of Fame doesn't necessarily mean that you've been an angel throughout your career. It means you've been one of the best players in the league, and you've you've acquired some hardware, whether that's individual hardware, or it's you've been part of some really great teams. Whatever it is, that's what ends up getting into the Hall. Uh, 92 93, 76 games, 22 goals, 43 assists, 65 points. In the playoffs, 21 games, 7 goals, 11 assists, 18 points for Toronto that year. So that was the year they almost get to the Stanley Cup final. And Glenn Anderson was going for his sixth ring there. So 93 94 plays 73 games with Toronto. His stats start to drop again 17 goals, 18 assists, 35 points. So that bounce back season is 65 points. It drops back down on March 21st, 1994. They say, fine, we're dealing him at the deadline. He's traded with a fourth-round pick in Scott Malone for Mike Gartner going over to Toronto. And Gartner enjoyed himself in Toronto. Gartner, though, no luck for him because, of course, he gets traded out by the Rangers just before they end the 1940 curse. 93-94 uh, with the Rangers. Glenn Anderson gets four goals, two assists for six points in 12 games. He's not there to score, though. He's there to be reunited with a lot of other former Oilers with, the, with that New York Rangers team. In the playoffs, 23 games, 3 goals, 3 assists, 6 points. He gets himself his 6th Stanley Cup ring. So again, having 6 Cup rings will get the attention of the Hall of Fame committee absolutely every time. And also having been a guy who had a couple of 50 goal seasons, 300 point seasons, the 99 point season notwithstanding, it's not 100. There's a lot of reasons to look at his career and go, you know, maybe. So February 13th of 1995, after that cup win is done, he signs as a free agent with the St. Louis Blues. Now, of course, Keenan's with the Blues. So he's he's going going with Keenan. Um, he ends up with 36 games played, 12 goals, 14 assists, 26 points. But in the playoffs, he only plays six of the seven games. He has one goal and one assist. He was suspended game seven for a high stick on Mark Watton a defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks who ended up in the hospital overnight after the high sticking incident uh, caught him caught him near the eye. So, yeah, that was the end of his time in St. Louis. So who signed him as a free agent? Well, January 22nd, he signed by the Vancouver Canucks, which got a collective what from me, only because the last time I had seen him, he was out there like a wild man trying to take Mark Watton off the ice in as painful a way as possible. Now, he wanted to play in Vancouver because he wanted to play for his hometown team. He thought before he retired it would be nice to play in his hometown. He's from Vancouver. And he wanted to play with Essa Tikkanen. Tikkanen was a Vancouver Canucks player at the time. So he thought that would be nice to play with, with Essa. Well, uh, January 25th, 
because the Canucks had to put him through waivers before they could put him on their roster. Now, Anderson already made it clear, I want to play in Vancouver. Made it very clear, I want to be in Vancouver. Well, Glenn Sather's like, well, I want him to come to Edmonton. So, Sather takes him. And he was not happy with Glenn Sather at all. Like, Anderson was choked. So, on the 25th of January, he's claimed by the Oilers. In 17 games for the Oilers, 4 goals and 6 assists, 10 points. And apparently it wasn't a great time for him in Edmonton. Um, odds are, as soon as he went in the locker room, he's like, okay, I don't recognize most of these guys. This isn't where I want. I wanted to play in Vancouver. So they they keep their word to him on one point. Sather says, well, he, I'll, I'll make sure that he goes to a contender at the deadline. Because in the games that he's in Edmonton, they go from being kind of in contention to nowhere near the playoffs. So they waived him again. On March 12th, he's claimed by the Blues on waivers. This was all prearranged, that the Blues would claim him on waivers. So the Canucks, who aren't at this point in a position to say, well, we could get Anderson and we could be a contender, the, the Canucks in 96, they were taken out by the Abs in the first round. So he goes to the Blues. Now, of course, this is the year that Wayne Gretzky goes there as well. So he plays 15 games for the Blues, two goals, two assists for four points. In the playoffs, he plays 11 games for the Blues, one goal, four assists for five points. And that would be his final season in the National Hockey League. He ends up playing 1,129 games, 498 goals, which is 46th all time, and it is criminally didn't hit 500. 601 assists, which means, while that's 92nd on the overall list, if he had 602, he would have ended up with 1,100 career points. He ends up with 1,099, which is 64th all time. His playoff totals definitely help get him in the hall. 225 games played, which is a ton. 93 goals, 121 assists, 214 points. Definitely a playoff performer. Also worthy of note, his five overtime goals in the playoffs. At the time he retired, he was only behind Rocket Richard. Rocket Richard had six. He had five in his career in the playoffs in overtime. So that's that's impressive. His number nine's retired by the Edmonton Oilers in 2009. Uh, and he did he did bury the hatchet with Sather. There was a, a Sather night in 2015 that he attended. Um, 1984 and 1987, Glenn Anderson was also on the Canadian teams at the Canada Cup, which won gold. He ends up 100 or he ends up with 151 power play goals, which is 50th on the all-time list. 85 game-winning goals, which is 27th on the all-time list as well. So he doesn't win a Hart Trophy. He's never a first or second team All-Star in the NHL. He just wins six Stanley Cups, the two Canada Cups, and ends up being one of the better known players from that Edmonton Oilers dynasty and ends up in the Hall of Fame in 2008. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.